Hi everyone, welcome back. This time I'll be covering the spectrum analyzer function of the MSO19. In addition to display data in the time domain, the MSO19 is capable of displaying, fre displaying the same data in frequency domain. It does it by performing a fast Fourier transform or FFT on the incoming data. In this tutorial, we'll be covering basic frequency analysis. To start, here's the 30 kilohertz signal sine wave that's in the time domain. And here it is in the frequency domain. I see a small peak. Let me drop it a little bit. So you see this waveform, and we'll move cursor B on top of it. Zoom in a bit. And we have B sitting at 29.785 meg uh, kilohertz, and here it is in <coughs> 30 kilohertz. The energy is reading about um, which we'll call about a volt. Now, what does it? So, in this FFT window, we have a few functions. First of all, the display can be done in power spectrum and magnitude. We have power density, real imaginary. Typically, you'll use the magnitude or the power spectrum. Those are the two that I use the most. And then we have the, um, then we have windowing function. So what is a windowing function? Let's take a look. If you have an in incoming wave, these are the windowing functions. We got a Bartlett, Blackman, flat top, Henning and Hamming, and Welch, and what's missing here is also the rectangular, which is a square. So, to do an FFT, we, t we take a time, we take a slice of the incoming data, and then from there we perform our FFT. Except that when the waveform gets chopped, you get these very, very sharp transitions. And without a windowing function, what it does is it puts more emphasis on the center of the waveform than the edge. So without this, you you will end up you will end up getting a huge amount of a high energy <coughs> distortion. So let's see what happens here. This is your sine. This is your 30 kilohertz sine wave, and we go to rectangular. Notice how additional how the energy is spread out and additional to the higher and lower frequency ends of it. But in reality, it's not because it's a high purity sine wave that we're sending it. So by placing a windowing function, we get to we, s we get to send focus the energy, and we get to t get a more accurate reading. So let's see what it looks like in the power spectrum domain. This is your, this is the energy for that sine wave, and it's spread across, spread spread across the, um, from zero to uh, 250k. That's what we're, that's our bandwidth. The difference between Hamming and rectangular, you can see that its energy spreads out. Let's go back to Hamming. One of the functions you can do is see all these bouncing. These are sampling errors and sampling noises. So one thing we can do is we're going to average it out. So let's turn on average and let's turn off our FFT. Here's our average. So what we're going to do is going to reset the average. So it takes on the original shape and slowly it averages all the noise and we get this nice clean waveform. So this is what a sine wave looks like. So what does a square wave look like? Let's see, let's switch to a square wave. And let's go back to our FFT, turn off. A square wave has a lot of energy in on its edges. And these are high frequency transitions. And these same frequency, we're seeing them showing up as harmonics. 
and running an average on that and this is what you'll see oh yeah I forgot to reset it you start seeing the peaks coming through same thing with the uh, triangular wave average reset this is the what a triangular wave looks like and this is uh, let's see this is the part the magnitude a huge amount of energy on this one So this is what a triangular wave looks like. This is how much energy we have. There's a few functions we have. We have ability to store the FFT the memory and store the average the memory. And this is and then we can also display average minus memory, memory minus average, and I'll cover this in a another video. So go play around with the with um, this function and let me know what you guys think. That's it for today. Thank you.